And what was the what was the phrase you would give them before they left the dressing room? That, that let's do your best, and I think you'll find the score will be more to your liking. How did that go? Well, um, if you know within your heart, and you're the only one that knows this. You fooled others. You did the things you were supposed to do. And, yeah, away from practice as the same as in practice. Uh, when the game's over, you can look in the mirror and be proud of yourself. All right, now this is a treat. I didn't know we had this stash over here, this pyramid. I'm gonna have a few of these signed before we get out of here. You can bet your bottom dollar. Uh, take me back. We were talking a little bit about the uh, the pyramid of success. Uh, you started developing this in 34, but even before 34, talk to me about the influence that your math teacher had at Martinsville High School as a young sophomore in high school, and what, what, what happened there? Well, we had discussed, he had a class discussion on what success is, and most of us at that particular time, I went along with Mr. Webster, who more or less defined success as the accumulation of material possessions, or the achievement of a position of power or prestige. And I think most of us went along with that. But some years later, after I'd gone through college and uh, and in the teaching profession, I, I wasn't happy with that. I found out that there were uh, parents, occasionally, of, uh, of some of my English students that would make their youngster feel that they had failed if they didn't get an A or a B. Okay. The C for the neighbor's children was all right, because that's the other thing, but not for their own. All right. And I didn't like that way of judging. I didn't think it's fair because the good Lord and infinite wisdom didn't create us all equal as far as intelligence is concerned, any more than even as far as size or appearance and other things. So I wanted to come up with something that I hoped would make me a better teacher and give the youngsters under my supervision something to which to aspire other than just a higher mark in the classroom or more points in some athletic endeavor. I didn't know how to go about it, but I wanted to change uh, success. I wanted to coin my own definition of success. And here I recall our discussion under Mr. Scheidler back uh, in high school. And then um, I, I uh, recall my dad, even before that, trying to teach, one, teach me and my brothers on the farm that you should never try to be better than someone else. You should learn from others because you'll never know a thing you don't learn from somebody else in one way or another. And most of all, Never cease trying to be the best you can be. That's in your power. And if you get too engrossed and, and consumed with things over which you have no interest, uh, no power, I should say, uh, it'll have an adverse effect on the things over which you have control. And then I ran across a very simple verse that said, At God's footstool to confess, a poor soul knelt and bowed his head. I failed, he cried. The master said, Thou didst thy best. That is success. And from those things, in 1934, I coined my own definition of success to help me become a better teacher.